Hi everyone, Hi. welcome to another session on career starter series with five questions. And with me today, I have Shon Ayoshola. I actually call him by his surname actually. <laughs> yeah, and the funny part is that um, I read a book called Note to Younger Self. And out of yeah. all of the writers in that book, it was actually Shon's section that actually captured my attention. And I was like, oh yeah, this is really good. I need to interview these guys so that other people, other young professionals out there can see what he's doing and get inspired by it. So that's why I'm inviting Shion today. Nice to have you, Shion. Yes, hello, um, Funke, nice to speak. Um, and how are you doing? Yeah, I'm good, you? Yeah, I'm doing very great as well. Um, thank you. Thank you for the um, introduction. And um, I'm glad that my story, you know, inspired something. And now we're having this conversation. So I'm really glad and I'm always happy to share. Oh, fantastic. Great. Nice to meet you. And I think um, another time I met you was on Clubhouse, right? But it's just that Clubhouse is voice alone. You don't get to yes. see it. Yes. <laughs> Yes, right. I, actually in clubhouse, can you remember right. that someone said you're a crush? <laughs> ah, I I mean, on that same, uh, was it in that? Oh, oh, okay. Ah, no, nah, I'm sure she was just joking, but. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, you, yeah. You, you don't know I, if it was actually joking, she can't be serious, <laughs> you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Right. So let's just get down to it today. Um, so Sharon, can we meet you? Can you just tell us who you are, what you do, and um, the other projects you've been involved in? Okay, thank you so much. Um, so um, I am Oluwa Sharon Joshua Ayanshala. I am a lawyer by profession. I um, work in banking and finance. Um, I work with the law firm of Aluku and everybody um, as an associate. And outside of law, I um, run a nonprofit um, called Commercially Aware, and we help undergraduates to um, transit from, you know, students' life or from school to work life and make that transition seamless for them. We help them get internships with yeah. top organizations. Yeah. And um, outside of that, we um, also... Um, organize internship, virtual internships internally. Mm -hmm. And um, I also have a platform called WorkGen. Um, we, from time to time, organize webinars um, basically around financial literacy, skill acquisition, and um, we've done some work, you know, helping people who are applying to foreign schools to learn more about internships and, you know, how to put in a, um, um, a, 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 how to put in great applications um, into into those those schools, and um, outside of that, I also have a podcast where I um, basically share my thoughts on career and, and personal development. Wow. Yeah, that's a whole lot. Thank you. <laughs> Really? I, so, <laughs> I have aside from these five questions i think i already have one more question at that yeah. point that i will ask you towards the tail end don't worry <laughs> cool. um, this is really impressive cool. this is really impressive i really love what you do and um the ability for you to combine all of this together is really impressive well done so um, my next thank you question, thank you yes what you got what got you started yes. in your career and that's so, um, I mean, can, can you take that again? What got you started in your career? Is it that you just had interest in all of these things that you're doing or you just wanted to give back to your community? What actually got you started? Yeah, I mean, so first of all, I mean, law has been a childhood dream for me. Um, it's always been. I enjoy intellectual debates. I enjoy to use my voice for other people. So it was just, um, um, it, it, was, it was a natural choice um, to study law, you know, and given that, give expression to my type of person. And 
if you believe in zodiac signs, I'm also Libra, and the, oh. the sign is like the skills. So we're born lawyers, and uh, right. So right. <laughs> so, so so um and <laughs> and indeed, when I when I started uh, not law school um, as an undergraduate, I did a lot of debates and moot competitions, so which then for that like reinforced my interest in the profession and. So aside from the fact that I enjoy doing it, I think I am pretty good at it. So I, and um, that's that's something you, that would that makes it a lot more enjoyable. Even though um, the stress can get to you sometimes. So, but when you enjoy what you're doing, exactly. um, then it feels like you're walking the park. So, so certainly it was the passion for speaking and using my voice for others that you know um, got me interested in the law and i think i i have i'm enjoying the ride so far yeah that's fantastic and then i think there's another arm to this that is giving back to your community especially if you're yes commercially aware right yes certainly so the that portion of it um not my so because the question was what got me started in my career. So outside of, of, of law, I enjoy giving back, right? So, and as a, as a lawyer as well, um, certainly because, uh, I mean, I can only give back what you can give what you don't have, right? Mm -hmm. So, so I am able to, I am able, so giving back is something that stands on its own, you know, regardless of, of law. So, but because um, I know other young professional and law students are also looking for direction. So um, that's passion, you know, for giving back and for um, helping people and, you know, just generally being dependable is what has then directed me to help, you know, particularly law students and young professionals in general. Yes. Oh, fantastic. Thank you for that. So to the third question, yeah. what are yeah. the top three things that helped you accelerate in your career? I know there are lots of things, but can you just, you know, center it around three things that have helped you accelerate in your career? So, I mean, the first thing, you know, like I said, is um, the passion for it. So if you don't enjoy what you're doing, you certainly, at point, you know, um, you would fizzle out or you might become, you might feel burnt out right from the beginning so passion for it is definitely one of those things that keeps me going now the second thing really is mentorship so um mentorship is key is certainly key because you're you're starting a journey you've never been to before i mean it's certainly not wise to try to reinvent the wheel right so people have done this a million times i mean the first lawyer with, that was called Nigerian Bar happened over a hundred years ago. So there are so many role models and so many people speak. So definitely I have a number of role models and a number of mentors who have um, you know, guided me through the journey. So, and that got me started. I was already like knowledgeable about the profession and the kind of things I should be doing at each stage, you know, when I was starting because I was using not one, not two, about three or four people's blueprints, certainly, right? So mentorship is, I'm very big on, you know, um, mentorship. Then outside of those, there's also part of it where you want to, um, what I call commercial awareness, right? Now, commercial awareness is your ability to want to, you want to, you, you always want to know what the trend is, in your, in your profession. You want to know which, first of all, like um, you, you want to be an accountant and you do not know which accounting firms are the top four in the world, right? So, so that awareness of your industry and, and that's one of the things that got me like my job in the first place because during the interview, I was able to demonstrate that awareness of my industry and the trends and when I said that I wanted to be in this um, practice area or I wanted to be in this um, practice group, they didn't hesitate because I already showed enough awareness of, of what I mean and sounded very knowledgeable about what I was talking about. So, 
So it was easy for, for, for me to say, oh, I want to be in banking and finance. And then you know, nobody would say, oh, what do you know about banking and finance? Because all that I spoke about, my work experience were leading towards you know, banking and finance. And that came so exactly. And commercial awareness can be, you can gain commercial awareness through um, one, doing internships, two, um, reading the news, and three, you know, following people who are like the experts or the leaders in your, top leaders in your, in your profession. So certainly, once you have all of those put together, you feel, um, you, you start to feel like you have a sense of direction. You know, you're just not moving purposelessly about. You already know, you know, what it is that you may not know for sure that this is what you want to do, but you have an idea of the kind of thing that interests you. And that can even get you started at least at the very beginning. Mm, mm, okay, mm. Thank you so much for Take, that. No, I, I'm not sure I got that. Can you say that again? Oh, I said at least. Oh, you said you don't know the end, but at least you'll be able to, you know, start off from where you are. Exactly. Exactly. So to the fourth thing, fourth question. If there's one thing mm. you wish to mm. learn earlier, in your career, what would that be? Right. So I would say for sure that I wish I had learned that there was no limits to you know the what I can do and what I can achieve. Wow. You know, to, to the extent that right from yes, and and you know, when I say these people still believe maybe. Uh, I, I don't know how to phrase it because people seem to think that oh, even as a student, I achieved a lot, right? Mm -hmm. Do you get my point? Um, but I feel if I if I if I knew then the things that I know now, to see, I would have even achieved a lot more. So while I was um, while I was very focused. I mean, I was basically a local champion, if you can put it, if you can put it that way. So I, I mean, I was doing the debates, you know, traveling all over Nigeria from here to, it was not until my fourth or final year, you know, that I started opening my eyes to global opportunities. So now the focus really is to be locally schooled and to be globally minded. I mean, that would be my advice to my younger self. So you have to pay attention. I mean, just know that the world is so flat and you have access with the internet. Yeah. So the content that you find useful and you think is sensible, somebody in Japan or the UK will find it useful as well. I mean, as, for, as long as you're making sense. Mm -hmm. So then, so once, once you have that sort of mindset, then you know there is no limit to what you can achieve. So you will start to play on that state, that global international state, even from, you know, like the get go from from hundred level or from your first year in the university. Yeah, that that would, that would be something I wish, you know, I, I, I had in mind. You know, that I was very intentional about. Wow, well, fantastic, fantastic. I, I think everybody has that kind of, um, you know, mindset that, oh, if I'd known so much while I was growing up, I think I'd have been able to achieve much more. And that's the whole um, idea of maximizing the tools that we have, like um, internet, um, you know, connecting with other people who have gone mm. out of you so you can get information and run with it even way earlier than the person ever, you know, started. Thank you so much for that, Shil. Yes, certainly. So to the final certainly. question, can you just share a word with young professionals? Mm. Say, if there is just one word that you can just share with them, what would that be? Mm. I mean, I would say for sure that their career is personal to them. So um, they should do what is best for their career. You know, don't get sentimental about the job. You know, you should always think career first, and and to that extent, you should be on the look. I mean, now that we're young, um, we should, as much as possible, um, try and avoid distractions. And by that, I mean, know that whatever you do as a younger person is more impressive. So you should definitely look to punch above your weight class. Try to do things that 
when the CEO or like the partner in your firm, you know, looks back and he, he realizes when he was your age, he wasn't even thinking as broadly as this. So this is the time to, you know, um, um, take those chances, take the risks and basically just, you know, go for, for, for the stars and, and realizing that nothing can limit you. Mm. Wow, thank you so much for sharing, Shun. Thank you so much. But then I said I had one more question, right, after this five right. questions. And that has mm -hmm. to do with how do you balance all of this together? You know, you work mm. in a corporate firm, nine to five. You have commercially aware, yeah. you do podcasts. Mm -hmm. How do you merge all of this mm. together and still create a balance? And still have time, you know, to see your friends and, you know, still have a life mm. of your own. So how do you do all of that together? Thank you. Um, first of all, it's not nine to five. It's nine to ten p.m. Nine to <laughs> one. Like what? I mean, right? You're literally working twenty-four-seven. I mean, I was still writing an opinion until two this morning, and now I have to still work after this call. But like you said, or or like I always say, you have to be intentional about work-life balance because work would not stop for you to start living, exactly. right? So, so if that's the case, then um, we have to then take life things as seriously as we take work. So if I were at work, I would schedule my time. I have to be on this call now. I have to be that. I mean, I mean, it might think like it's too deep, but we should also do the same for, you know, our life calendar. So you schedule, you know, time to reach out to X, time to um, work on this, time to just, just so that you're making the most time, I mean, the most use rather of your time. So when you're that intentional, um, I know I was, um, Ali Abdal is some podcaster that I also listen to, also has like a newsletter. And he, he had said that, oh, he even stumbled on this app that allows him to schedule calls with his friends so that they can catch up and talk. And then he sends you a calendar invite and say, are you available to talk at this time? So, so you, yeah. so for me, how I do, how I do it, it's definitely not convenient. I mean, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. um, what it means will be if I, if I, so for instance, on the weekends I record my podcast. So if I have work, it might mean one either waking up way earlier to record the podcast, or recording the podcast way later in the day. You know, after I've done the work, you see. So on Sundays. I can decide to go out, you know, way earlier and then try to come back by 8 p.m. just so that I can prepare for Monday again. You know, just in between the line, just make sure that you are deliberate. Like, so in, in your consciousness, you know, you have to do these other things because they are equally as important. So once it is in your consciousness, you will definitely find time to do it. Mm -hmm. Wow, fantastic. Thank you so much for your time. I have another question for you. So mm -hmm. you talked about passion, right? That um, when you have passion right. to do something, it would be so easy for you to do, right? So there are, um, there are a lot of questions I get in that light, which means that, oh, if I'm passionate about X and X is not giving me enough money, <laughs> why should I be passionate about it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> do you get... So there's another school of thought right. that says that you mm -hmm. can build um, your passion about around where there is money. Do you get so well, what's your take on that yeah i mean money is important and i agree that when you're talking about something that doesn't give you money then to be honest that's not a career that's a hobby you <laughs> see so um so right so so if you if it's a career it means that you have skill there is demand for it and then you know you are you are Enjoy mix. So you have a skill that is in high demand and you're passionate you know, about that. That's perfect. That's the perfect mix, right? But the next to perfect mix is that you have a skill that is in demand, but you're not passionate about it. So while you can do that as a career, as a job, you can then spend your leisure time talking about what things that you know bring you happiness and bring you joy because we still have to put food on the table. Exactly. So job, while you do other things, you know, uh, as, as a hobby so that you can, you can, you can, you can be happy while you're doing it, you know. 
So, so that, that would be my advice. Yeah. Wow, fantastic. Thank you so much for your mm. attention. I know you have some other things to catch up on, but I really appreciate this few minutes, you know, you created a schedule to be here. Thank you. Uh -huh. Have a nice day. Nah, I'm happy. I'm very, you too. I'm happy to do this and you're doing a fantastic job. As well. And by the way, you look very nice. <laughs> I you. thought I should tell you, right. Oh, thank you so much. Okay. Jim. Thank right. you. All right then, yeah. have a nice day. Okay. And I'll definitely catch up. Yeah. All right, sure. Bye then. Yeah. Bye.